there's rules in prison. Okay. And I, as, as much as people get on these things and they talk, talk about prison, I'll do a thousand prison stories. But what I don't do is glamorize prison. Mm -hmm. And I don't talk, because the people, for me to tell you the story about the people that I hurt, I got to tell you about the people that I hurt. Mm. And so I'm thinking if I'm that guy and I'm sitting home watching this podcast, right. this guy's on here talking about what he did to me, how does that make me feel? Bad. You know what I'm saying? What kind of trauma am I inflicting on him? Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I'll say I went to SEG for hurting people, but I won't tell the story mm. of what I did to the people. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. Or the, just, I mean, yeah, you got to, I jumped over the thing, I did this, it is, all that. It's, it sounds good. Right. It's a hella clip. It'll go viral. Right. But it's going to, if that person sees it, even though we ain't friends, I'm, he's still a human. Mm. And if I say I'm about helping people, then is this helping somebody, entertaining somebody at, at his expense? Or their expense is a bunch of them. Right. <laughs> so I don't tell the stories of hurting people. Respect. I'll tell the story of when Dominic checked me or they were going to do, my homies would put me online or a stuff that happened. Like we had a dude, but well, shit happened. But as far as my victims from in prison for being hurt, nah, what I used to. Mm. When I, when in my early days of speaking, I would talk about it because I was insensitive to them. Mm. I'm saying, so but then you I, learned over time. Like I don't yeah, want to, I don't want to make them relive that pain. Yeah, I was like, if, even if you read my book, mm -hmm. I mean, people who know me, they know I've, I've been charged eight times with attempted murder in prison. Mm -hmm. I've been shipped to nine states. I've been riots on airplanes. I've done a lot of shit in prison. I got caught eight times. <laughs> I ain't gonna say how many I did. Right. I got caught eight. But the baseline is, you read my book. There's no blood. Hmm. Nobody bleeds in my book. Right. Nobody gets shot in my book. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets choked in my book. My book is about a story about my transformation through life. Mm -hmm. It's not about carnage. Right. I'm saying it's not about I'm saying clickbait. Right. So you can read you can give my book to an eight year old. They can read it and walk away untraumatized. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm saying I read some books, man. It's all about hustling and slick this and pimping that and shooting this and I smacked this one and I chopped that one and literally. You read my, you give my book to eight year old, mm -hmm. and they'll walk away with lessons, and no trauma. And you think that causes more harm when people glamorize prison, or they glamorize the system, or they talk about the the things that they did? Do you think it? Some people think that's cool and like kind of fall into that. The, my son, mm -hmm. wonderful kid, he'll listen to a rap song when they're talking about blowing up the city, or burning down a block, or pimping holes, or shooting people, or slinging dropes, drugs. To him, it's entertainment, right? Because he has a dad and a mom. Right. But the kid without a dab in the arm, that's real life. Mm. That's wow. I want to be that. So for some people who listen to this, they'll say, oh, that's just a story that something Andre went through. Or they'll say, I can do that too. So I, I make it a point. I tell people, I train people to be speakers. Mm -hmm. You can't go to a school full of middle schools and high schools and tell them that you was the most biggest drug dealer in your neighborhood, the toughest guy in the prison, knocked people out, and you finally woke up, found Jesus, and got your life together. They're not hearing the Jesus part. Right. They're hearing that you was a drug dealer with the cars and the fame. You was a gangster with the with the life and the money. They're hearing that part. Right. So you're responsible for what you say and the interpretation thereof. Mm. So yeah. if I give you something that you can reinterpret as this is cool, that's on me. I always thought like it was a little unfair the way because like obviously I grew up in like a white suburb and I really <laughs> what gave it away the white people part. <laughs> yeah. but why like, did you grow up in the Spanish suburb yeah I'm they wouldn't sorry. let you in nah they wouldn't let me in I, I have no rhythm um, we established that yeah exactly that's a part of the the I guess the initiation process but no I I obviously all my friends love rap music. And I thought that there was a little bit of a glamorization of like the drill rap that you're talking about. Right. And it, to me, it kind of felt like uh, the way people used to look at like cowboys, where it's like they got to watch these guys like rob banks and do crime and they were able to distance themselves. And it was just like a story. It was like right. these uh, action heroes that they were distanced from. But then I was like, you know, these are real people. Like it dawned on me much later. I was like, oh, no, these are real people. Just like you said in a real situation, living this every day. Like, this is a real kid that's rapping about this, about his friends and his homies that aren't here anymore. Exactly. Partially due to, you know, the culture that was bred through some of those specific songs and things like that. It's not the music. Music is a reflection of the lives that they live mm. or, or they want to live. It's the lack of education. It's, if you go and you educate these kids, mm -hmm. and education includes love, Right. You know what I'm saying? If you can do that, 
then it's just music and entertainment. Right. If you don't do that, it becomes a guidepost for life. Right. My son will never think I'm going to go buy AK, go on a block and post up and smoke cigarettes and the rest of that shit. Right. You know why? He has to look at me <laughs> and talk to me. Yeah. And there's nothing in my continence, there's nothing in my conversation, there's nothing in his mother's discussion that lets him believe that that's a real scenario. Right. Yeah, same with me. That was like my upbringing. Like I never thought that that was an option. Right. No, nah, he doesn't. He'll make the, my son actually makes beats, but he does not believe that that's a lifestyle. Right. Yeah, that's an interesting distinction. Okay, so I'm curious. Uh, I want to know about the redemption part, like that the epiphany that you had that sort of was like, all right, I'm going to turn this around. I might want to make you change. The hardest part about change is changing. That's the hardest part about changing, actually making the change. Yeah. Rationalizing it, thinking it through, making it make sense is easy. Mm -hmm. Making the change is the hard part. So what does everyone in your gang think when you're like, all right, I'm going to learn law. I'm going to go to these classes and everything like that. I'm changing up. They didn't go. I went by myself. But if you're leading the gang, what do they think is going on? Well, what happened is I passed my responsibilities off to my number two, and I kind of like stepped aside and I told him, I'm going to help you, support you, advise you, whatever you need. I'm your guy. I'm going to make sure that you win. And I started going to do my thing. And the the six years that I put in, I put in a lot of work, as they say. I went through a lot of stuff, and I never blinked, never backed down, went through stuff most guys had never been through in our state. Mm -hmm. Surviving two and a half years in solitary, two years in the feds, and all that. surviving the stuff I survived wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. And then leading the way I led was 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 noticeable. So I'm going to school every day, programs every day. People think I went crazy. Ah, because they didn't know what happened. The word was Dre snapped. Dre crazy. Dre probably on meds. He, the time got to him. The time got to Dre. He just, he, just, he just snapped. The same way I watched some same solid guys go crazy in solitary, and I didn't think bad of them. I felt bad for them. People thought the same thing about me. Dre snapped. He thinks going to programs is going to change his life. Like These guys... Rubbing shit on himself, thinks he's gonna do something. Or he thinks going to program gonna change his life. He can drain went crazy. Ah. And one day I was going to, I was coming back from program or going and guys, they were all outside walking by the home. He's like, yo, yo, Dre, what's up? So I'm going to program. For what, man? I said, man, I'm trying to work on some stuff. They said, dude, you're the smartest dude in prison. You are literally the smartest dude here. Why are you going to programs? I said, man, me and my dad don't get along, man, and stuff messed my head up. I gotta go work on that. Dude said, now, why are you really going? Now he's challenging me. Yeah. I said, man, dude, I'm telling you, man, I'm just trying to go work on my stuff. They said, nah, nah, what's really going up in that program building? He's, I'm like, oh, I said, let me explain something to you. I'm going to programs. I'm going to counseling. And there's one or two things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to let you choose. I can either go to counseling and talk about me and my dad not getting along, him not being there and how it hurt my feelings and it's affected my life. I can go back to the unit, get my knife, come back and stab you in the face and talk to the counselor about some idiot trying to get in my way of talking about my dad. You make the call, but I'm going. He said, man, Dre, that's fucked up what your father did to you, man. You need to go fix that. <laughs> I said, you sure? I said, man, I'm like, all right, cool. And I kept going to counseling. I would die for mine. See, going to counseling don't make me weak. Yeah. It don't make me soft. don't make me not Dre. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If I got to kill you to go to counseling, then fuck it. I'm going to kill you and go to counseling. They got counseling in solitary. Right. You ain't going to dictate my life. You ain't going to dictate my life, homie. 